Welcome back, grassroots.org community. My name is Ben. Uh, today we're doing our third and final installment for our member spotlight for the September Open Challenge. Uh, if you forgot what the Open Challenge is, it's a one month fundraising sprint where organizations have to raise uh, $5,000 among 40 unique donors. Um, and that's not the most important thing for the Open Challenge or being on Global Giving. Uh, after you compete in the Open Challenge and if you successfully get onto Global Giving, organizations will then be able to raise revenue from uh, many different streams that incor uh, incorporate uh, corporations uh, such as Ford, uh, Nike, HP, Dell, who all have some type of giving program on uh, Global Giving. So we're really trying to help our organizations succeed in this, uh, this Open Challenge. Uh, today we're welcoming Sharon Bullard of Blossoms of Guiana. Um, Sharon, how much have you raised today? Um, to date we've raised $845 from uh, 12 uh, donors and um, hope we're still uh, <laughs> hopeful that we can uh, meet that goal. We're pushing down hard when it comes down to the end started. Um, uh, you know, calling folks and, you know, sending the reminder emails. Um, so hopefully uh, we will get that goal. You're, you're pretty close. So I hope that, uh, you know, the grassroots community uh, can, you know, come together and help you get there. Uh, we definitely want to see our organization succeed. So um, I will say that, though, if you aren't able to uh, help Blossoms, um, just by liking or sharing this post, you will also be able to uh, help uh, raise awareness uh, for Blossoms of Guyana. Um, and after I speak with Sharon, if you're interested in sticking around, I can explain why liking or sharing a post uh, can help out. I haven't explained that uh, before, but it might be important for your organization uh, to know. Um, but first, Sharon, uh, we'll get right into the questions now. Uh, can you tell us about your organization and then also what your uh, your project on Global Giving is trying to accomplish. Okay, great. Yes, thank you. So, uh, Blossoms of Guyana was formed in uh, 2009 and it was formed primarily to help uh, children living in orphanages or living in homes run uh, by the government in Guyana. Uh, we are a 100% volunteer based organization, so that allows us to use all the donations that we raise uh, to help the children uh, that we serve. And we work primarily by collecting donations of clothing, shoes, toiletries, toys, books, school supplies uh, from people living here in the U.S. and we uh, ship those to the children in Guyana. And so with this project, we are now actually looking to expand our, uh, our outreach to help improve um, educational opportunities for uh, low-income or poor students that uh, are living in the country. And so we also try to team up with other organizations um, wherever we can so we can make a bigger impact. And so we've actually teamed up with another organization mm -hmm. called iKids, and we've identified two schools. Uh, one is a primary school, which is the equivalent of an elementary school here in the U.S., and the other is called a secondary school, which is the equivalent of a high school um, here in, in, in the U.S. And so we plan to adopt the, the schools to provide uh, resources and these schools were identified as schools that were severely lacking. And so we're looking at providing computers um, to the primary school as, the, as they have no computer lab, and books uh, for possible libraries and classrooms, as well as other general supplies to uh, teachers and students, just so uh, they, they can have an easier time teaching and, and, and learning. Those guy kids, is, did they work with those schools? Um, primarily, and when you came in, they put you together with them? Um, well, no, actually, it was just um, both organizations had the exact same idea, and okay. so we were like, oh, well, we're doing, we're literally thinking about the same thing, let's team up and let's figure out how we can do it bigger. Yeah, it's cool when uh, two organizations are willing to come together, so I, I, I appreciate that. Um, so I was telling Sharon, for everybody who obviously cannot see the beginning of this, but I once was a tutor, but my educational awareness in terms of ideas is, is lacking now. Um, but in your project on global giving, you talked about educational outcomes. 
uh, and that's something that you're looking to achieve in these school systems. Uh, can you first tell us, uh, for those who don't know and those who don't remember, uh, like myself, um, what an educational outcome is, and then specifically what those educational outcomes you're looking for in this project? Um, well, so our educational outcomes, and particularly for uh, this project, are going to be uh, sort of twofold. And so, um, so particular uh, for this one, uh, because we're dealing with um, elementary um, students and, um, and, and the equivalent of, of high school students. So for the high school students, our primary focus, or uh, um, for, well, for all the students, it's going to be um, seeing um, improvements in their um, education outcomes. So that means their reading levels, math levels, and just their overall performance in school, um, behavioral um, behavioral uh, uh, behaviors and just overall in, in general and, and their enthusiasm and, and encouragement and focus on school. Um, and then for particularly for the high school students, uh, we definitely want to see them of course advance within their each each grade level and then also um, have them um, take what the known as the CXC in, in Ghana, which is the equivalent of the SATs here in the US. Um, so that they can go on to some sort of post-secondary or post-high school um, uh, education, be it the, the teacher's college or be it the university or be it some kind of technical, um, in, uh, some kind of technical training so that basically they're prepared to embark on some type of career or job uh, once, they, uh, once they graduate. Right. Um, so kind of moving on to a more like specific story about, uh, you know, students that you might have worked with in the past. Do you have any type of stories that are, would be great to share with some of our, you know, the graduates.org community? So, um, one particular um, student that we're working with now, I will call her Mary. Uh, <laughs> we've, um, uh, she lives at uh, one of the homes that, that, that we work with. And so we've uh, identified her as, as a student having great potential. And so what we currently do now is we're funding um, her to take um, lessons, which are the equivalent of just basically tutoring lessons in Guyana. And so um, that's pretty much required before you take this CXC. It's, um, it's uh, almost expected in order for you to uh, pass and, and do well. And so um, she's uh, in that process now. And, um, and so after, you know, doing this, she will, you know, take the CXC and expect her to go on and um, do very well. She wants to go into the teacher's college and um, be, become a teacher. And so, I mean, even in, in addition to that, we've had a, a number of other expectations. Um, one of the volunteers that we work with, who's in Ghana, has actually adopted one of the, um, the children that works at this home. So, you know, she's obviously been able to be placed in, um, you know, a, uh, you know, obviously, you know, a, a, a cared, cared for by, by an individual in a home. So, um, so yeah. Well, it's cool. I mean, Mary's going to actually, like, help you keep the cycle alive by going, you know, to uh, teaching and then, you know, mm -hmm. being able to kind of pass that forward, I guess, is, would be the appropriate yeah. uh, term mm -hmm. for it. Um, the final question, um, do you have any last thoughts uh, for donors who might be considering uh, giving to your project? Um, well, yes. Um, uh, our, our focus, again, is always on children and education. So um, it's anyone who thinks that, um, you know, children, who, who, who focuses on children, who's focused on education, who focuses on improving the lives of children and basically anywhere in the world, um, I think this project um, would, uh, would appeal to them just basically because it does uh, give the opportunity to do that. Our, our, our primary goal with this is to help these students who, prob who may not have another opportunity, who may not have another chance to um, gain the education that they need, the skills, develop the skills that, that they need so that they can actually um, uh, ha you know, go on to college or, or training or, or something so that they can actually have uh, a, a, a better life, so to speak. And, and so this is, um, this is the focus of, of this project. And we've seen great um, potential in the students, and many of them are very bright, um, but they just don't have the funding 
um, uh, to, to, to get them where they need to go. And so this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to help those very talented, very bright, um, uh, very focused children um, actually get to that uh, next level and, and actually be able to become, if you want to call it, productive members of society. So. Well, uh, you know, we appreciate your time telling us about your, your organization, Sharon, and we're going to, in the description, have a link to your global giving campaign so uh, people in the grassroots uh, social media channels, uh, as it be, would have the opportunity to uh, give. Um, I'm just going to quickly switch over to myself. Um, and of course, there's, if people don't know, they're going to see a thousand pop-ups. Um, it's because I have a, I've gotten malware. So thank you, Internet, for giving me malware. Um, oh, no. <laughs> uh, but if you aren't able to uh, give, again, helping uh, Sharon's organization and uh, you know others with just a, a like or a share, and I'll explain why. Um, because it might be interesting to people out there uh, exactly how Facebook uh, might measure it. But Facebook uses an algorithm called uh, EdRank, uh, which is just basically a, a score. And it uh, measures how many of your followers or friends, whatever you want to term them, who follow your organization uh, will initially see a post. If you think that your entire um, Facebook following is going to initially see your post, it'll go through their uh, timeline. Uh, that's not true. Um, we'll use the example if there's, uh, you have a thousand followers on your Facebook uh, page, only about 10% um, at the get-go will actually see that post in their, their news feed. Um, and so the way in which more people are going to be actually able to see that post is by that initial subset uh, engaging with the post. And engagement is a click, a like, a share, or a comment. Um, so Facebook uses this to kind of determine if uh, your post is, is good co content, and then it'll share it out. Um, now after that, your edge rank, your score, is going to actually fluctuate positively or or negatively, uh, if not many people engage with it, um, and then it'll be carried forth uh, throughout your next uh, post and kind of continue on in that cycle. Um, so just by you know liking or sharing this post here uh, will help the the initial subset. Um, I'm not sure what our current edge rank or what percentage, uh, but it'll help Sharon and her organization uh, build some more awareness in our own profile and. You know, the more that you know uh, for your own organizations out there, uh, it can help you as well. So um, we appreciate everybody's time. And again, thank you, Sharon. Thank you.